What's up, nature lovers? My name is Brady, and today I'll be sharing my adventures of kayaking and snorkeling along Florida's Emerald Coast. The footage compiled in this video was gathered over multiple trips to Florida in the summers of 2021 and 2022. On my first trip to Florida in 2021, I traveled to Johnson Beach in Perdido Key. Traveling solo on this adventure, I decided to play it safe and explore the Big Lagoon estuary rather than braving the waters and currents of the open ocean. The water in the Big Lagoon was still very clean and clear, much more clear than the waters I was used to exploring in Gulfport, Mississippi. After kayaking around for a while, I found a nice spot along the beach to pull up my kayak and do some snorkeling in the Big Lagoon. Being alone on this adventure, I decided to stick to the shallows in order to minimize the risk of drowning or being hit by boaters. And that is fine by me, because the shallows were still packed full of some incredible wildlife. Upon dipping my head below the water for the first time, I was greeted by a bunch of pinfish one of the most common fish species found along the United States Gulf Coast. I'm used to catching this species on rod and reel, so it was really cool to encounter them in their natural habitat. Everywhere I looked, there were beautiful, colorful little pinfish, as well as a few other species of small bait fish. These shallow areas are perfect for these smaller fish species because most oceanic predators are unable to hunt in such shallow waters. However, some animals are able to hunt in the shallows, including crabs and stingrays. The crabs often hide in large beds of seagrass waiting for any small fish to cross their path. While stingrays do hunt the fish in the shallows, they also frequently hunt in and around these seagrass beds searching for any of those crabs lying in wait. So with an abundance of sandy bottoms and seagrass flats, I was really hoping to come across a stingray on this trip. This area was absolutely beautiful. I spent several hours kayaking and snorkeling around in the Big Lagoon, interacting with and studying the gorgeous wildlife that inhabited this estuary. Many tourists and beachgoers ignore the beauty of estuaries, favoring the white sand and emerald waters of the coast. While the coastal beach is certainly breathtaking, I would encourage visitors and locals alike to take the time to explore and appreciate the wonderful variety of wildlife and beauty of the Big Lagoon and other estuaries. While I wanted to stay forever, it was eventually time for me to head back to my car and make the journey back home, leaving the ocean behind for now. Destin is one of the most popular tourist destinations along Florida's Emerald Coast, and I was fortunate enough to solo explore this area for a day. 
most beaches in this area were incredibly busy, but I was able to spend my day exploring along Eglin Beach, a beach only available to military and military dependent personnel, meaning the crowd was much thinner than the average Destin Beach. Walking along the beach, I came across a blocked off sea turtle nest. If you know me, you know that I love turtles. And while I have yet to encounter a sea turtle in the wild, it was so cool to see a sea turtle nest, my first one ever. It's of the utmost importance that we do not disturb any sea turtle nests that we may come across, and that we keep the beaches clean and free of debris, in order to ensure that the hatchlings are safe and healthy when they begin their great journey to the sea. After walking for a bit, I came upon Destin's West Jetty. Jetties provide incredible habitat for all manner of ocean life, and they're typically full of anglers looking to catch some fish, but since this jetty was still within the confines of Eglin Beach, I practically had the entire jetty all to myself. The tide was low at the time I was there, so I was unable to snorkel along this particular section of the West Jetty. Fortunately, this jetty also provided a nice vantage of the clear emerald waters of the East Pass, the channel of water in between the East Pass jetty and the Destin West jetty, and that connects Choctawachi Bay to the open ocean of the Gulf of Mexico. It was from this vantage that I spotted a dark, round shape moving through the water, parallel to the jetty. The unidentified creature neared my position along the jetty. Unfortunately, the water was not quite clear enough, and the creature remained just beyond the underwater visibility. From my angle, it was hard to determine what this round object was, but my mind immediately jumped to Sea Turtle. Heart racing, I tried to get a better view of the animal, racing down the beach and preparing to get into the water to see what it was. By the time I managed to get my gear on and get into the water, the animal had traveled too far into the bay and out of sight. I still cannot positively identify what this animal was, but judging from the footage I captured, what I initially believed to be a sea turtle, I am now rather confident, was actually a large southern stingray. What an exhilarating first animal encounter of this trip. While I missed the opportunity to swim with the first mystery creature, I decided to maintain my position along the jetty and keep a lookout for more wildlife. It wasn't long before four or five long slender shapes moved into the channel. A group of rather large fish was swimming just a short distance from the jetty. My inexperienced and overly eager mind immediately identified these fish as sharks, but looking back on it, they could have been any number of long fish, including red drum, mackerel, sharks, and barracuda, among others. One thing was for sure, these were some big fish. While I wanted to know exactly what these fish were, East Pass is an incredibly popular channel for boats, and these fish were farther out than I was comfortable swimming by myself. When it comes to the ocean, it's always better to be safe than sorry. The fish swam together in this one area for a bit, but eventually took off back out into the ocean. Unfortunately, this trip too had to come to an end, so I left my fishy friends behind and began walking back to my car. Walking back along the beach, I noticed another dark, round shape sitting in the water near the beach. Once again, my mind immediately identified this as a sea turtle, possibly one coming to shore to lay eggs. I got my camera ready and moved closer. Just before I was able to get a good look, the creature swam off and away from the beach. I did get a good look, however, when the animal went up and into a wave, providing me with a perfect look at another giant stingray, this time a blunt-nosed stingray. There's a giant stingray in the water. Look at that. Wow. Oh, it's coming towards me. Wow, there it is. Look at that. That's a monster stingray. He's right there. I thought he was a turtle. Wow! There's a huge stingray. Whew. This was my closest large animal encounter of this trip, and it was with one of my favorite ocean animals. What an epic way 
to end this trip. It was time to put Destin in the rear view and make my way back to Mississippi. My first piece of a sand dollar. Nice. Put that right back where we found it. On my final trip to Florida in the summer of 2022, my family and I took a trip to the Navarre Beach Marine Park. This park is most famous for its artificial sea turtle snorkeling reef. The reef is made up of 78 artificial structures and begins about 340 feet offshore. The Navarre Beach Snorkeling Reef is home to a variety of sea life, including sea turtles, dolphins, jellyfish, rays, sharks, reef fish, inshore fish, deep sea fish, and more crustaceans and little reef critters than I can count. The conditions on this day were nearly perfect. The surf was relatively calm, the water was clear, and the sun was shining. A perfect day for spotting wildlife. On previous trips to Florida, I was exploring by myself, so I was always incredibly cautious and safety conscious. But with my family here with me on this trip, I felt it was safe enough to finally snorkel on one of the Emerald Coast's famous reefs. My older sister, two younger brothers, and I would be venturing out into deeper waters, about 12 to 15 feet deep, in search of the reef. Since we weren't the best swimmers in the world, we decided it would be best to wear life jackets, making it easier to swim out to the reef without worrying as much about larger waves and currents. For those who don't wish to go all the way out to the reef, the shallow waters of Navarre Beach are still full of wildlife. Before even making it to the reef, we saw a variety of fish species, including Gulf Whiting, Gulf Menhaden, and even a curious little pompano circling my feet. All geared up, we began the swim out to the reefs. The emerald water was stunning, but as the sea floor drops away from your fins for the first time, you can't help but be overcome by nervousness. From this point on, we were at the mercy of the sea. Excitement continued to build as we inched closer and closer to the reef. Who knows what creatures we may come across along the way. Finally, the first reef structure came into view. It was absolutely beautiful. My first time snorkeling on a reef. We made it! And the fish were everywhere. Among the fish observed were spot tail pinfish, Gulf Menhaden, and my favorite reef fish on the Gulf Coast, the Atlantic Spadefish. I was so excited to see these amazing animals in their natural environment. Yes! <laughs> this was the best day ever. Towards the end of our snorkeling, a couple of paddleboarders informed us that there had just been a sea turtle swimming right next to my diver down buoy. The buoy was strapped onto the back of my life jacket with some nylon paracord, meaning there was a sea turtle directly behind me, but I was too focused on the fish below to notice. They also noted that a pod of bottlenose dolphins passed by the area right behind us. Ugh! Missed moments like this can be frustrating but it just goes to show how easily wildlife can sneak up on you in the ocean. Even when the water is clear, like it was on this day, your visibility is still incredibly limited underwater. It's important to be aware of your surroundings at all times, because you never know what amazing creatures could be swimming around you at any given moment. Every experience is a learning experience, and this just means we'll be even more prepared on our next snorkeling adventure and hopefully you can learn from our mistakes as well. We continued to snorkel for as long as we could, but eventually, as the day grew shorter, we had to make our way back to shore. We made it back to the beach exhausted, but in possession of some incredible memories that we will never forget. My experiences of exploring the waters of Florida's Emerald Coast have been absolutely incredible. 
Being born in Kansas and growing up primarily in Oklahoma, I had always dreamed of seeing the ocean and swimming alongside its amazing creatures. Living in Mississippi and getting to travel to Florida in the summers allowed me to make those dreams a reality. The ocean is the birthplace of all life on our planet, and it's our duty as nature lovers and conservationists to protect these beautiful ocean ecosystems and all of the animals that call them home. For now, I must leave the ocean behind and move on to my next grand adventure. And always remember to stay naturally curious.